So let's suppose you move into a neighborhood and one of your neighbors is a guy named John Wayne Gacy. And as you're getting to know people, everybody's talking about what a great guy John is, how much they like him. And then you get to know him, you have some barbecues, uh, he plays the clown at one of your kids' birthday parties. And yeah, you like John Wayne Gacy. Everything's just great. And then one day you're outside your house and, and the police have uh, John Wayne Gacy's house surrounded and they're pulling out bodies from the basement and you find, find out that he was a mass murdering psychopath. Now here's the question. Do you keep liking him? Or do you think, well, that's kind of a deal breaker. I mean, that's just crossing the line. That's just something I can't let go. So I used to like John Wayne Gacy, but after realizing that he was this mass murdering psychopath, I don't like him anymore. Now, common sense would say, yeah, that's what you're going to do. It's obvious, right? Well, I see Christopher Columbus the same way. I've been uh, arguing against the celebration of Columbus Day for years. And the thing is, I used to like Christopher Columbus. I went to grade school, went to high school, 1492, initial voyage, Native Americans were peaceful, kind, and generous, helped him repair one of his boats, and that was it, and this great explorer in discovering America, and then of course we have North America, the United States of America, and yeah, what a, what a swell guy. But then I read this book, I think it was called Lies Your Teacher Told You, where I discovered things, discovered things that I was never told. A lot of things that uh, you weren't told in, in high school, and obviously a lot of other people have discovered these things as, as, as well. Now, who was Christopher Columbus? How can you really put this guy into perspective? Think of it this way. You go to a place where people are peaceful, kind, and generous. Now, what are your, going to be your thoughts on how to treat these people? Now, you're probably going to think of the uh, golden rule in the Bible, right? Treat others the way you want to be treated. They're being kind and generous to me, so I'm going to be kind and generous to them. Uh, before that, Confucius. I mean, this is philosophy that a lot of uh, Eastern and Western philosophy, you have the same concept. Confucius says, don't do to others what you wouldn't want done to yourself. That's what a good person would do. How does Christopher Columbus see this situation? Well, we know because we have it through his own writings. These people were peaceful, kind, and generous. With 50 armed soldiers, I could subjugate them to do my will. And in 1493, what I didn't learn about in high school, 1493, he went back, not with 50 armed soldiers, with 1,200. And he subjugated these people. We're talking about steel, crossbows, cannons, vicious attack dogs on a naked and defenseless people. Now, how do you get people to do your will? Well, here's an idea. You tell somebody to do something, and if they don't do it, you hold them down and you cut their nose off or you cut their ears off and then other people see that and now they know what happens if they don't obey your every order. This is the kind of thing that was done. So I used to like Christopher Columbus. Now I don't like him anymore after finding about, out about the torture, the mass murder, the, the carnage, the, the gut-wrenching gut-wrenching whores and how evil this, this person is. Now, because of that, I've been called, oh, you're a liberal, you're a progressive, you're a revisionist. Well, if by revisionist you mean I want a history book that suppresses the truth or, or lies to be a, replaced with a history book that does tell the truth, I'm for the truth, even when it's uncomfortable, I'm for the truth. So if replacing a history book of lies with a history book of the truth means I'm a revisionist, then, then fine, call me whatever. But this uh, leftist, progressive, liberal stuff, hey, I discovered this guy who was a mass murdering psychopath. 
so I don't think he should be celebrated. And the people that make excuses for this guy is beyond the pale. I've heard moral relativism used. Well, you can't judge him because we've made all this moral progress. So the idea here is that people 500 years ago were just dumb and didn't know that murder and rape was, was wrong. They just had no idea. I mean, how insulting to the people of history. And I've never heard that used as an excuse for any other monster. Uh, Cliglia, uh, I was reading about him. He sure was horrible, but I can't judge him. You know, uh, Genghis Khan, all responsible for all these people being slaughtered. But I don't want to judge him with my modern moral standards. It's absolutely insane. And when you look at the most moral people that ever lived, you're talking about ancient philosophers like Confucius and Socrates who lived 2,400 years ago, 2,500 years ago. There are moral people that lived 500 years ago, but Christopher Columbus didn't sail with philosophers and scientists and the best of mankind. He sailed with criminals. He sailed with the worst of mankind. Now, the other argument is, oh, well, he's a founding father to our country. And since our country did wonderful things, we have to just accept all this stuff and, and hero -fy him anyway. Once again, insane. You have to look at a perspective of history in the timeline. There are more years between Christopher Columbus and the founding fathers than the founding fathers and us. Initial voyage, 1492. The history of the United States of America doesn't begin with Columbus. It begins with Captain John Smith. It begins with the Mayflower Expedition, Plymouth, Massachusetts, which began in 1620, over 100 years after Columbus. And over 150 years after that, you're talking about the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Founding Fathers, not creating a monarchy, but recreating a republic, three branches of government, separation of powers, constitution that begins with we the people, individual rights and liberties, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of peaceful assembly. Now, please explain anything that comes remotely close to that ballpark that Columbus accomplished. There is nothing. There's absolutely no reason to celebrate this man as being part of the United States of, States of America. Now, the other excuse I've heard is that Italian immigrants weren't treated well and needed this hero to latch on to. So they latched on to Christopher Columbus. Now, for the Italian Americans promoting this, I have to wonder how horrible do you think your history is? How horrible do you think your ancestors were where this is the best you can come up with and you're telling your kids to heroify this guy. Well, mass murderer, but this is the best we can do, kids. Have you heard of Galileo? Okay, not a, a landmass on a planet, but discoveries that extended to the entire universe. Dump the mass murdering psychopath and go with the scientist. Go with the brilliant scientist. Go with someone who is a real hero that didn't torture and kill people. In New York, there is this big elevated statue of Christopher Columbus. Take that statue down. And if Italian Americans get upset, say, hey, we're getting you an upgrade. We're gonna put up Galileo, a real hero. And sometimes someone we can tell the history of where we don't have to suppress the truth or lie. We can tell the real history of Galileo. For the organization called Knights of Columbus, change your name to Knights of Galileo. What an amazing upgrade that would be, and one that's long past due. In 1989, we launched a probe into space called the Galileo, and this was done on October 18th. So on October 18th, actually it's best that holidays be on a Monday, so make it the third Monday of October, whatever, have Galileo Day. What an upgrade and somebody to really celebrate. So that's my take on it. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. She's going to do it.
have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. 